audio. Hello and welcome to Rogue Academy's Sound Class 101. My name is Charles Carroll, and I'm an audio engineer down in West Hollywood at the Invisible Studios. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to record audio. Audio, audio. Good audio adds to art. It's a foundation that serves one of your greatest senses. Bad audio, however, will take you out of the experience. Today, we'll be learning some audio concepts, some recording techniques, and some tips to help you while you're making projects at home. Many of you at home are brewing fun ideas of content you'd like to make in your head. Rather than keeping it all in there, I aim to help you realize those ideas. So that being said, there is an entire world of concepts in audio, so today we'll be focusing on just recording yourself and others around you. So that being said, bring your creativity and a voice. Before we think about what to record, we must first think about where we record. There are some ideal conditions in which to record. And some not so ideal conditions. Now let's talk about room acoustics. To begin, reflections. A reflection refers to a sound wave that bounces off of a surface. When you have multiples of these reflections combining and interacting with each other, you create reverb. Rooms that have a lot of reverb sound big. Although it's a really cool effect, having too much reverb can easily make somebody hard to understand, causing your recordings to suffer. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peck peppers. Of pickled peppers, Peter Piper. Peter picked. Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Acoustic isolation refers to a type of product that disconnects a room from its connected surfaces. Think of an isolated room as a floating room. Professional studios often use these types of products so they can escape from unwanted noise that usually travels in from connected surfaces, in turn, isolating their recording spaces. The effect is pretty apparent. You can barely hear the clapping on the other side of this window. Although this is difficult to replicate at home, there are options that you do have at your disposal. Another type of product is acoustic treatment, often used to control or lessen reflections in a room. Professional studios often use treatments such as foam paneling, insulation, or diffusion all to control their acoustics, but you actually might have some alternatives lying around your home. Draw your curtains, close your blinds, hang your blankets onto your walls. These will all aid in your acoustics and therefore help clear up your recordings. However, in order to make the most effective use of these, we have to realize how much reverb we have around us. Notice the reverb surrounding those claps. To clear up your recordings, you'll have to minimize that as much as possible. The less reverb, the better. Try this yourself. Walk around any room and start clapping. Find a spot where you hear as little reverb as possible. Depending on what you hear, it might be better to switch to a different room like a closet or living room. Just remember to always use your ears. Also, keep in mind some tips. Stay away from hard surfaces. Wood and drywall tend to reflect more, whereas soft surfaces like carpet and curtain tend to reflect less. This means closing doors and opening curtains will have a noticeable effect on your sound. At the end of the day, whatever sounds best will be best for your recordings. Now we need to figure out how to get those recordings. Let's talk microphones. To start, here are some recording concepts to keep in mind. Off-axis refers to sound that travels at a mic indirectly, whereas on-axis refers to sound that travels at a mic directly. A mic's rejection will determine how well a mic will reject sound coming at it indirectly. This all will affect your recorded sound in various but specific ways. More on that later. There are two main types of mics to consider. Condenser mics and dynamic mics. Condenser mics tend to be more sensitive to sound, whereas dynamic mics are opposite in that they are less sensitive to sound. This makes dynamic mics great for rooms with less than ideal conditions where condensers may be too sensitive. Microphones are found in all kinds of places, from computers, phones, tablets, cameras, some headphones, and more. With microphones, the best place to start is with whatever you have. A lot of people have phones or laptops, so those are great places to start. The majority of modern phones and laptops will have condenser mics built in. 
The sensitive nature of these mics will make your room choice, setup, and mic placement all the more valuable when it comes time to record. That being said, what is the ideal way to place mics? To start, get your mic, whatever it may be. Most devices will come with a built-in voice memo or sound recording app, but if it doesn't, then just check your respective app store for a free one. Now, if you're on a computer or a laptop, then what I would suggest is getting Audacity. It's free, it's easy to use, and it's available on most platforms. Plus, it's also well-documented, so getting started is painless. Next, take a second to find your settings. It's best to turn off features like ambient noise reduction or voice processing, as these may hurt your recordings in unintentional ways. If you see quality settings, set them as lossless or as high as possible. If you don't know if your device or app uses features like these, or if you just don't know how to turn these off, an internet search will help you through this. Always record your audio as cleanly as your device will allow you to. So let's try this. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle. Sorry, it's a little clip. Okay. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. There we go, that's a lot better. So you're hearing lots of clicks and pops and bass that's non-existent in my voice because of how close I was to the mic. This happens because there's a lot of pressure buildup coming from all the air being pushed directly into the mic. So here's exactly what I did to get around that. Holding your mic away from your face alleviates this. Try to keep your mic about six inches away from you. You might also notice some mouth clicks, so move your mic upwards about three to four inches and angle it down about 10 to 15 degrees. You'll lose a bit of that presence from your voice, but you'll also gain clarity and time from not having to edit things like mouth clicks out. If you're recording someone else for something like a video project, you might want to consider getting a mic you can put onto them, like a lavalier mic, also known as a lav mic. These are small mics meant to be placed directly onto somebody who is being recorded. Headphones with built-in mics can actually work for this. Simply clip the mic onto their shirt or tape it. If you have an extra person on hand, you could tape your mic onto a broom handle to make a makeshift boom pole. If you're outside, make sure to put a windscreen of some kind over your mic as well. And sure, when setting these up, that you make sure everything you're using is secured. Better safe than sorry, after all. Also make sure you test everything as well and adjust your mics until they sound good. With practice comes good audio. We've learned a lot together today, but before we part ways, let's talk about something important. What to consider if you're interested in expanding your audio capabilities. First things first, all the audio concepts that we've discussed today apply regardless of how much you may or may not spend on gear. Regardless of anything, even if it takes a little bit of work and creativity, you can get good audio with what you have. So that being said, links will be in the description below if you're interested in any of these things. If you like doing on-location video shoots and such, consider a lavalier mic. This $20 mic plugs straight into your phone or camera of choice and has a clip. If you like doing podcasts or recording vocals, consider a dynamic mic. This $80 mic can plug into any computer and comes in a kit with a desk stand, mount, and cables. If you are considering doing some professional work in a home studio, you could spend about $250 to get a good set of products that you can build on. Spend $40 on a mic stand, a cable, $109 on an audio interface that allows you to record your mics, and a good $100 condenser mic. This way, you'll always have a solid foundation to build on. This concludes our class. Thanks for tuning in to Rogue Academy, and until next time, keep scheming and dreaming. <laughs>